Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm giving a pretty quick weekly update. So this is a new project that I'm working on. So it's Arduino powered pulley system. So I uh, essentially asked OpenAI and Grot to basically help me create this pretty straightforward system where I click a button, it turns a stepper motor, which you see here, a set number of times. And if you click it again, it goes in the opposite direction. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how I designed the pulley itself. So the 3D printed aspects, and I'll be sharing a short uh, sh soon as well, kind of on the project. So, and so here is the file of the pulley components. So I just wanted to just kind of show you guys how I did it and my thought process behind things. I'm just gonna step through each section real quick. So this first part was just a piece to go around the shaft of the motor. So I measured that and I made this sketch here, which was essentially the the shaft is kind of a circle with a flat part on it. So I measured the diameter and then I measured the width. So I, I got that by doing a circle and then basically cutting off the top and bottom. And I really didn't know what size I wanted to do the rest of the stuff. So I kind of just made a, a bigger part outside. I knew that I wanted to have uh, basically a wall on the outside to try to channel everything in. So that's why there's two circles in the sketch uh, on the outside. So if I show this sketch, you can see I had an inner and outer diameter. So that's how I got to the, the taper here. And then the next thing I made was another uh, basically I projected that to this side so that I can make a wall on the opposite side. I could have extruded that, which would probably have been the better way to do it. But sometimes when I'm just thinking things through, I don't really follow textbook CAD form, but it ends up working out okay usually. So then I added the chamfer here to, to make it look a little bit better. And then the next thing I did was added another chamfer. I could have done that all in the same step, but ended up not doing it uh, in the same step, obviously. And so here I actually just basically split the body. So if you remember that sketch from earlier, what I did, if I just show this here, is I selected that profile and I just split the parts in half. And sometimes I do that just to be able to uh, modify the shaft. And what I was gonna, what I was doing was basically just separating it and then making it equal distance. So I wanted to just extrude this by itself. And since it was kind of hung up inside of that, if you remember, I didn't have anything to extrude from. And there's different ways to do that, but I thought just splitting it and then adding uh, the distance there would, would help out and make that work. And then, then I split this uh, part in half here, let's see. Oh, I added a so I, made it, I added a midline or a midplane here, and the reason I did that was because I was about to come in and add uh, this hexagon, and then I extruded that out. And if you watch the channel, you know that I like hexagons. I think they work out pretty well with 3D printed stuff. And the reason I was doing this here is because then I could print this pretty easily if I split it in half. So at some point here, I'm going to split the parts in half, and uh, so now I have this part uh, kind of ready to go, and it's a single piece right now. But uh, then I basically just added some tolerance here, so that should show up. If you can see there really closely, there's a little gap, and that was just so that I knew it would fit a little bit better. And then this one here is where I mirrored it, it looks like. Yeah, so I split it in half down that construction plane. So I made a plane, a midplane, which you do up here, midplane, and then I split those in half. And the reason I did that was so I could print them both uh, easily. So you basically just print this on the, on the print bed, and then you also print the other part on the print bed, and then you basically join them together in the middle. And they're kind of holding, held in place by the outer pulley part. So uh, that ended up working out pretty well. And let's see what I'm gonna do next. I think this is gonna be part of the pulley. Yeah, so basically here is a fairly complicated sketch of me just trying to figure out where to put the mounting holes for the motor mount. And then I knew, obviously I'll need to hold the axle of the wheel there like that. And I made this offset plane just to give it a little bit of uh, kind of clearance there. So I think I've offset it about one millimeter and you just do that by selecting here and clicking offset plane. So I can make another one on this side real quick. So that's sometimes a good way to get something that you can draw on gives a little space in between things. So that's all I was doing there. And then I just extruded that part out. And again, I measured the distance for that motor to mount uh, there. So that's how I added that. And then this was just basically extruding to that mid plane because I'm going to mirror these here in a second, which is the next step. So now they're mirrored across. So everything is a uh, symmetric there and then let's see what else I did so just added some chamfers on the edge that's pretty straightforward and then I added a, a mounting hole down on the bottom there and then probably added a fillet to everything so I always like to do that towards the end and then let's see here oh yeah the last step is the way that I attach the string to the pulley so I just made a little hole through the through the pulley here and I made sure that the hole on one side was barely big enough to fit the string through and then on the other side it was a little bit bigger so when I tied a knot on this end and pulled it through, it would get nice and stuck in the hole so it, it wouldn't come out very easily. And then I just added a little chamfer to the edges of the hole there. So that is how I made the pulley. Uh, this will be in a short form video, either already posted or posted soon. So if you want to follow along, uh, please do that. I'm going to be talking about you know using AI and some other things to make Arduino projects. I'm kind of really interested in that right now because it, it works really well, uh, to be honest. So it's, it's really surprising how much you can get done with uh, those models at this point. So anyway, uh, follow along if you're interested and thanks for watching.